Hey, everybody. Where you been this whole time? We, we've been waiting around since 2 o'clock, but nobody showed up. Thanks so much for bearing with us, you guys. We've been having some technical difficulties with Facebook, but I think we've got it all up and running now, hopefully. We're really sorry for the delay. It's put a lot of pressure on us as well. We know you have a lot of stuff to do. You're busy people, got candles to make, so we're going to jump right into it. Again, really sorry for the delay, but let's get it started. Yeah, we're really excited you're here to talk about scent blending with us today. So you may have tuned into some of our Let's Talk Scents videos in the past, but this one's a little bit different. Now we're doing Let's Talk Blending Scents. Exactly. It's a new addition. We're mixing things up a little bit. We're going to be doing some scent blending of our own. Uh, we also would love to hear from anyone that's out there listening. Uh, leave some comments on the video. Give us some suggestions of blends that you would like us to try out. Maybe some blends that are mm -hmm. working well for you. Uh, and any questions you might have. Questions, comments, give us some feedback, please. You know, other than get your computers fixed. We yeah. don't need any more of that. But let us know what you think. Follow along with us. Um, you know, even if you have some blends that you want us to try, and now that you're unhappy with us and you want to see us make some bad faces, give us those as well. Yeah, we'll try those too. We'll try everything. So smell along with us. We got a lot to do here today. So let's get started. So first of all, with all of these great blends, or all these great fragrances that Candle Science puts out, why would somebody want to blend yeah, to begin with? Why you mess know? with perfection, right? You know, we put so much into these fragrances that you know you may be wondering to yourself why? Why even blend? So well, you do a lot of blending for your business, right? I do, and for me, a lot of it is is you know giving an element of exclusivity mm -hmm. to my line, knowing that I have specific blends that nobody else has. Right. You know, they highlight my brand. They're specific to me, and I know that at the end of the day, somebody might have something similar. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be quite the same. Uh, but that's just one reason. You, you may blend because you have two fragrances that you just love and you can't choose between them. So you want to give them a try together. Um, occasionally, you may want to highlight a certain note, you know, a certain component mm -hmm. within a fragrance oil that you just think it needs to be heightened a little bit. It needs to be intensified in the overall blend. So a lot of people do it for that reason as well. It's also a great way to practice picking out all those fragrance notes and uh, all the individual fragrances. Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And on that note, uh, we may want to... Uh, that note? We may want to go ahead and explain what a note is. Yeah, so you know? what is a fragrance note when we're talking about top notes, middle notes, and base notes? What does that mean? So all you savvy fragrance blenders out there probably already know this, but for anybody who's just getting mm -hmm. started, if you're new to candle making and fragrance blending, you may not be familiar with the concept of top, middle, and base notes. Uh, so that is generally how we talk mm -hmm. about them, three different categories. And your top notes are going to be the ones that you smell first. They're the mm -hmm. lightest components within the fragrance oil. Uh, you're going to get those right when you open the bottle. They're going to hit you really quickly. Uh, they tend to evaporate faster. Yes. Uh, they're also lighter. Uh, mm -hmm. and I mean, that in, in terms of, of the actual you know, physical component of it, it, they come out faster. They're more volatile than the other components within mm -hmm. the fragrance. Um, but you'd get a lot more of them out of the bottle. Yes. They, tend to, they tend to come out first, so they dominate if you don't let the fragrance air out and balance out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So after those, you're going to get the ba the middle notes, which we consider to be the heart of the fragrance. I love that, the heart. It's the heart and soul of the fragrance oil. And that's going to be some of your heavier florals and citrus notes, but also some of the lighter woodsy fragrance mm -hmm. the components, the gourmand notes. They're, they're going to be the heart. They're what you're going to get the most of when you're burning the candle. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, you will be naming them after those middle notes. Like lavender, the, the middle note of lavender is lavender. It's lavender. You, Tend to, those tend to dominate. Yes. Your base notes are going to be the anchors of your fragrance oil. They're the ones you're going to get last. Often, you may not smell them at all out of the bottle. And this is the mm -hmm. problem with smelling straight from the bottle. Those base notes sometimes get lost. Yes. And that's where our blotter strips yep, come into play. we use blotters. Um, so this is a blotter strip if you have not seen one before. Um, and they're great because they do not have any smell of their own. So nothing about the blotter is going to corrupt uh, the scent you're trying to smell. Absolutely. Yep. People try to improvise, um, and that can absolutely be done in a pinch. Mm -hmm. But these are great because they contribute no additional aroma to that fragrance that you're trying mm -hmm. to test. Uh, they also have these little stripes on them. What's oh, going yeah. on with that? Yeah, these red lines, um, if you can see them closely. Um, Heidi, can we get in on that? Heidi, can we get a shot of that? Yeah. Um, but anyway, so they kind of act as a guide so you know which end to dip into the fragrance itself. Um, but the red lines also help if you're doing, you know, say a 50-50 blend. Um, so you're only going to dip up to the first line uh, into each fragrance. Absolutely. And we do sell these on our website. They're... Got it on the camera right there. Got oh, it yeah. over here? Yeah. So, so there you, you go. Close lines. up of the blotter strip, if you can tell. And when you dip it, just pro tip, when you dip it, it tends to creep up a little bit higher than what you anticipated. So, uh, you know, go low. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fill it out. 
Um, and remember those lines when you're testing your fragrances, because as you start mm -hmm. to tweak the blends, uh, you're going to want to maybe put more of one on one blotter right. and then less of another. So keep that in mind as you're going. Uh, also keep in mind that you're, when you put it in your wax or your base, if you're making mm -hmm. soap, that's going to be completely unique in that your base, your wax is going to react with those fragrances. It's maybe going to add a slight aroma to it that's natural within the base or in the wax. So there's no way to completely replicate that finished product. You, but this is the closest you're going to get. The yeah. blotter strip is going to be the closest representation outside of making an actual candle or right. soap. And it'll help you narrow down all those scent blend ideas you have because you don't want to waste all those supplies making candles out of every single idea you come up with. Plus, that would just take forever. It does. You waste a lot of supplies. I have cabinets full of candles that were just for testing, and now I just don't have the heart to throw them away. Mm -hmm. But So let's move into it. Let's start doing some blending. Um, and also, we do have a new fragrance finder tool on our website. Ooh, if you yes. haven't tested that out, uh, we're talking about notes. Uh, the fragrance finder is fantastic in that it's going to help you to refine our fragrance list by season, mm -hmm. by category. And but by note. Also by note. So this is going to be important when you're blending. Mm -hmm. You may not want to blend just any two fragrances off the shelf. Um, Again, we're going to get to some bad blends later. Uh, so if you've ever tried some bad blends that you want to subject us to, absolutely let us know about that. We're going to get to some other ones that we, we've, the, some unfortunate blends we've tried in the past. <laughs> um, but that will happen at times. You want to look for simpler fragrances sometimes. will blend better than really complex fragrances. Mm -hmm. But also overlapping notes. If you have you know, a fragrance A that, that has a few of the same notes as fragrance B, those are going to blend a little bit better than two that are just drastically different. Um, so we're going to start with one that is pretty a straightforward. Simple one, right? A simple yeah. one. So we'll do a one to one blend. So this will just be 50 50. So we're going to do lavender and garden mint. Mm. Uh, I believe I have the garden yes. mint over on my side. I've got lavender here. All right. So are we going to go just to the, the top yeah, line we'll on this one? Yeah, we'll just go to the first line. All right, the first line. Mm -hmm. And so one super handy dandy tip, Heidi, if you want to get a close up of this, uh, that I learned from one of our coworkers just the other week when you're using a blotter is to bend the end of it up just a little bit. Oh, right. Shout out to Heather for yeah, that shout one. Shout out to Heather. Huge shout out because not, it helps I'm... you dip it in a little bit better, but it also prevents you from shaking fragrance everywhere after you pull it out of the bottle, which I definitely do. I may have done it a time or two. It will stain your clothes off into little spots of fragrance oil will persist yeah. over time. So be careful with these. So dip to that first line. There we go. Yep. And you want to let these dry, what, about 10, 20 seconds? 10, 20 seconds. And one of the reasons we're choosing these, not only are we doing a simple one-to-one, it's the 50-50 blend, with meaning that when you do go to weigh out your fragrance oil for your products, you'll just be using an even half and half of each mm -hmm. of these. So if you're doing one ounce per pound, you'll just do a half an ounce of each one. Easy math. Easy math. But also these specific fragrance oils we chose because lavender in particular is fairly simple. Uh, in terms of the overall complexity of the fragrance, it, it just has a few notes to it. Primarily lavender, as you might have guessed. It has a, you know, some citrusy and some cedar to it, uh, but it's very much a lavender mm -hmm. fragrance. So it plays well in blends because it doesn't contribute too many notes to the overall profile. And it goes great with mint um, because you know, lavender is generally a, a floral component, um, but you know, lavender is related to mint. It's in the mint family. Ooh, so I it, didn't know that. It is indeed. I actually looked that up Learned before, before we started. Huh. Let's give it the, the tech delay. I get to look that You're one up. You're just a font of knowledge, Kevin. I, I do my best. So these two blend really nicely together. Lavender is, is a little bit more floral than, say, your, your spearmint or your you know, eucalyptus. Things that you would find in garden mint play really nicely with the lavender. Yeah, so it's a good it. one to start yeah. with. Thank you. Nice wafting. Yeah, you, you want to waft this. This is something I didn't do before. This is an amateur move. I tend to just put them right up to my nostril, but you want to fill the air in front of your face Did with you it. Did you stab yourself in the face with it? Perhaps a time or two. Yeah. Don't do that. You really don't do that with cinnamon. Yes, don't do that with cinnamon. Yeah, see, these two just, they really work. And mm -hmm. this would be a blend that I would do. I mean, either one of these could be used by mm -hmm. themselves. They're fantastic I love fragrances. garden mint on its own. I won't it's, lie. I still use Garden Mint by itself. Mm -hmm. I like to do as many custom blends as I can, but Garden Mint I use by itself because yeah. it's just so good. This um, just makes me feel like I'm in a spa. It's it's absolutely mm -hmm. a spa fragrance. I love that one. Yeah, that one is uh, would do great in a high-end spa line. Uh, it's very fresh, very herbal, very earthy. And I love it, and the two complement each other very nicely. Yeah. So if you're sniffing along with us, give those two a try. They're a great intro to blending, a great way to get started. Yes. Um, but, you know, not... Well, speaking Quite. of getting started, uh, we have a great new article on our website. Oh, yes. Um, you have to plug about, your article. Yeah, Fragrance Blending 101. 
Um, so you should see that link go flying across your screen soon-ish, hopefully at some point. And if not, we'll just post it in the comments. Um, but yeah, so definitely go and check that out. And but. don't forget to check out the Fragrance Finder as well. That Fragrance Finder tool is really beneficial when mm -hmm. you're doing any blending. It's and it's gonna help you just to, fun to browse. It really is. Yeah. It's a lot of fun to browse. Uh, take it, you know, narrow them down by category and by season, especially going into the fall season, that can be really helpful. Yep. Uh, but especially when looking at different notes and what you want to blend, that can be mm -hmm. a very handy tool. So bookmark it on your computer, on your phone. Make sure you have that on hand because it's really nice yeah. to have. Uh, now, I'm going to move into this one because, you know, this one's fantastic. It's a great herbal blend. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for the sweet ones. Kevin likes it sweet. And I do, and I know you don't, so I pre-blended this one off to the side yeah, I'm glad when you, you, when you weren't looking. Um, but I'm going to make you smell it because it's really, really good. So All this right. is our new Dolce de Leche. I do like that fragrance. It's very good. Yeah. Uh, and our caramelized pralines. Ooh, okay. Yes, really good. So this one, the caramelized pralines, I would use by itself because I really, really like it. But mm -hmm. some, I've been told that it's a little too nutty. Uh, too some people nutty. <laughs> a little, little too kooky. They they want to they want to tone down that nuttiness a little bit. Uh, the, you know, it's a little heavy on the praline, the chestnut. They want to mm -hmm. they want to bring that down. So they mix it with dolce de leche, which is you know just a super sweet, really gourmand mm -hmm. caramel fragrance. And you can smell it already. Yeah, it's really decadent. It's really, really yeah, good let me blend. See. All right, let me check out your blend, Kevin. Hmm. You know you like it. Come on. Okay, I do kind of like right. it. This is a good one. Uh, I do like that the Dolce kind of really tones down that uh, toastiness of the caramel. It does pralines. indeed. It's it's a really nice blend, and it's mm -hmm. it's you know for maybe for a line if, if you're lacking on a bakery, if you don't have a, a nice gourmand fragrance mm -hmm. in your line, you want to blend up something unique. This one really works, and the two could also be blended with with a variety of other fragrances that we have. Absolutely, you know, very vanilla. You could add a touch of cinnamon to it. Um, again. Mm -hmm. Use that fragrance finder tool to, to look at the individual notes and see what works together. This mm -hmm. is just one of many, many possibilities that you could be doing here. Um, and remember, if you have suggestions for blends you want us to try, definitely drop those in the comments and we'll try them out at the end. Please do, because we're going to run out. We only have so many uh, that we, we pre-planned here. So please, let us know if you have anything else you want to add. So we have a note coming in. I got one here. Uh, Christy Scott says, I like mixing lavender with baby powder. Ooh, lavender and baby powder. Interesting. Yeah. And actually, bit. you know, Christy, you are ahead of the curve because that is one of the suggestions we have in the fragrance article we just posted. Is it really? Yes. Well, great minds think alike. Maybe you mind if I take a moment to try it? Yeah, check it out. I really, we already have our lavender there, yeah, so let me wanna, try the baby powder. Try your blend, Christy. Let's see. I got to be honest, baby powder by itself isn't my favorite. Um, it's very true to life. I mean, it smells exactly like baby powder. Uh, I, I can attest to that. Um, but so maybe it's just me personally that it's not not something that mm -hmm. that I gravitate toward. But let's see how this lavender does. And I imagine the, the I imagine baby it'll powder. tone down the powderiness a little yeah. bit. Just make it a little more well rounded. I could see that. Let's give it a moment just to air out a little bit. Here, why don't you hold those while I put okay. this cap back on? What do you think? Ooh, hmm. it's really clean. This would be great in laundry rooms. Anywhere you want to give that air of, you just cleaned in here, but you didn't have to clean. So I really like that. Well said. All right, that is a lot better than the yes. baby powder by itself. Actually, I think I might. I might like that better than the lavender by really? itself, too. Okay, well. All right, excellent Kevin idea. Thank favorite. you for that one. I wouldn't call it a favor. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Oh, okay, okay. But, but it is, that's really good. Nice work. Nice. Thank you for that one. That one's good. You all can, yeah. can borrow that idea from, from a fellow viewer here. So what about when you want to do something a little bit more complicated, or maybe you want to have a little bit of one, more of one fragrance than another fragrance? Oh, so not an even one-to-one. -one. Yes. Maybe you have something, as we mentioned earlier, you may want to heighten one of those mm -hmm. components within a specific fragrance. So that's where your second line on the blotter strip is going to come into play. That you can fill, you know, you can go to the second line mm -hmm. on one blotter, whatever fragrance you want to dominate within that blend and go to the first line on the second one. Mm -hmm. So I think a good example would be English Garden. Ooh, I love that one. English Garden's a fantastic fragrance. Yes. I, it's one of my favorite florals because it's very green. It's not, a, it's not a, just a true mm -hmm. floral. It has a lot of greenness to it, a lot of leaf, a lot yeah. of stem. It, it smells like a bouquet. So I can see how some people might want to heighten, say, the lilac Ooh. in the blend. Yeah. You know, so they, maybe they have a specific brand they want to use it for. They just want to put lilac in the name. For whatever mm -hmm. reason, they want to bring out that lilac. Maybe so, you just like lilacs. Maybe I don't you blame do. You. Absolutely, and we happen to have a great lilac Ooh, fragrance as well. Indeed. So I'm gonna grab, grab the English one. Garden. You have lilac over I there. I do. Remember, bend your tip here. Yes, I have forgotten to do that far too many times. Kevin's gonna be shaking fragrance all over the table. Uh, it would not be the first time. And so I'm just gonna be dipping to the first line, right? Right, I'm gonna okay. go up to the second. 
And for this one, I don't know, maybe you want to do even less. Maybe you want to try three to one or four to one or, you know, get really specific with it. And we'll get to that a little bit later. For now, this is just the next step mm -hmm. in complexity, going a little bit heavier on one than the other. So English Garden by itself again, if you haven't tried it and you need a floral, Absolutely try it's this It's a great out. one to try. It is, and it can be blended with so many of these. So we're going lilac just because it's, it's you know, mm -hmm. lilac, similar to lavender, is, is pretty simple, and it's note profile, so it blends well. Right. I but don't be afraid one. to mix this with other florals as well. English Garden is an excellent mixer. Oh, yeah. Mm, the extra lilac really tones down some of that bright green um, of, the, of the English Garden. It does. It's, it's a very green floral. Mm. In fact, we've gotten some feedback from customers that it's a little too green for them. This is partly why we chose this today. Ooh, what do you yeah, think? I like you that like a lot, it? yeah. Yeah, and you can do this with, like I said, other florals as well. Uh, we've, had the, mm. we've had the suggestion of orange blossom. Orange Ooh. blossom would go really well. Lavender, again. Plumeria, when, when, maybe? Absolutely. Yeah. So all of those could blend really well with English. It's just a great, even though it's, it's fairly complex, it's a great jumping off point for doing your own custom floral mm -hmm. blend. Yeah, that is very, very good. Yeah. It helps that our lilac's so good too. Yeah, it always helps. Indeed. So give that one a try. If you have your own specific florals you'd like to share with us, send those our way yeah. as well. And if you'd like to keep it under wraps, we don't blame you. Yeah, you know, I have a few that I'm not gonna share. I... Someone suggested dragon's blood and orange blossom. I need to see that. Dragon's all right, blood fair and enough. orange blossom? That's, okay. All right, pause the show. We're, we're, I, right, I need to we try that we got to try one this now. one I right have dragon's now. blood over here. Do you have the orange blossom? Let's see. I should have orange blossom. Here we go. This is one of my favorites by itself. It's fantastic. And this one I use often without blending it. Uh, so I'm a little bit hesitant, to be honest. It's so good. But... Well, and you're a native Floridian, too. I am. Yep. I am. And that one, I can say, is mm -hmm. true to life. And pass me a blotter. Oh, my apologies. Thank there you. you are. You think we're just going to try this in a one to one? I don't know. Did they specify the ratio? They did not. They did not. So okay. we'll do it a one to one. We'll I went. I actually crept up a little bit above that first line there. Yeah. I oh, did and I too. didn't bend it again. Heaven. I know. Heather's trying to teach me. Amateur. I'm, I'm getting there. Orange blossom. You'll notice. I don't know if you can see it on screen or not. You'll notice this in your finished product, though. Orange blossom does have a heavy color to it. Um, yeah, it's it, pretty yellow. It's very pretty. It will shift the color of your wax. Yeah. Uh, to a, to, once you put it in the wax, it comes out sort of a dull yellow, but you'll usually see the difference between that and other fragrance oils. Mm -hmm. Doesn't bother me, but something to keep in mind as you go. You could always use some dyes to, to cover yeah. that up. So let's see about All right, this. I'll let you test it out first. You, are you afraid of this one? No, I just, you know, I want to let you, I want to see your, re your reaction. All right, that's extremely unique. I'll give it that. And better than I anticipated. Let me try. It is unique. Hmm. I don't hate it, I've got to say. That's quite the compliment. She doesn't hate it. If I did hate it, I would tell you. I don't know. I kind of like it. It's growing on me, though. Let me yeah. see. Yeah. And now that I'm, I'm getting it from over here, and yeah. it's not as strong. Yeah, sometimes you want to kind of yeah. you go for at it from a couple different angles just to make sure you're not smelling one a blotter strip primarily. Right, yeah. All right, well done. Very unique blend. A, a really nice take on Orange Blossom, too. Um, yeah. And Dragon's Blood's kind of a, a tough mixer sometimes because it is a very complex fragrance, yeah. so it can be tough to mix with, but I think Orange Blossom was a nice choice. Mm -hmm. well, well done on that one. All right, what should we try next? I think I kind of want to try a blend with Margarita. Well, it's in the spirit of adding something to it. You yeah. know, we, we blended earlier to heighten a component. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is a great opportunity to add a component. Mm -hmm. You know, mar our margarita out of the bottle is fantastic. You know, if you, if you wanted just a standard margarita, you're in a coastal town, you want to add something like that to your line, margarita is a fantastic choice by itself. Mm -hmm. But maybe you want to do, oh. say, a strawberry margarita. What about a peach nectar margarita? I think strawberry is better, but I'll take it. I don't know. I mean, okay. well, well, let's we'll, find we'll out. We'll see. Let's find out. So you could do this with a variety of fragrance. Well, I mean, you could do it with other citruses. You could try it with blood orange. Uh, that would be heightening the orange mm -hmm. that's already in the margarita. Maybe watermelon um, would be good. Watermelon, not too bad. You could do it with strawberry, which I'm convinced is going to be awesome. You could do it with peach, which eh, might be all right. We'll find out. All right, so we're going to do uh, well, up to, the, to the second line. We need sure. our margarita. I don't know what if you want a there? dragon's blood margarita. I Maybe you do. I don't... most certainly do not. Okay. Um, all right, let's do up oh, to the second my, line. You have my strawberry over there, I believe. Oh, I do. Okay. Yep. Strawberry and guava. Along with, your, along with your peach nectar. There you go. 
All right, thank you. Peach nectar. This is one of my favorite scents on its own. It just smells so good when now, it's burning. I most certainly will not argue with that. Peach nectar is fantastic. I do a blend. In fact, strawberry and peach go really well Ooh, together. I bet that would be a good strawberry blend, too. Strawberry and guava are, and peach are a great blend. Um, I'm not sure about your peach margarita, but <sighs> let me see that margarita. It's right there. Peach nectar. Mm. Just smelling it out of the bottle smells so good. It's the best peach I've ever used. I think I've said that on air before, that it's the best peach fragrance I've ever used. It's, it really is that good. Uh, we had another peach in the past that has been, has been discontinued, uh, but I was not bothered by that because peach nectar is yeah. so good. Peach nectar is all you need. Someone just suggested peach nectar with mistletoe. Peach nectar and mistletoe. <sighs> so we do have it out already. What kind of evil geniuses do we have watching right well, now? I know, right? Yeah. I don't know, just, Kevin. I think my no peach margarita way. is really good. There's no way that's going to be better than this. Besides, whoever orders a peach margarita? Is I that would, even a thing? I would order a peach margarita. I think you'd have to create it first. I'll nobody, take one right now. Nobody has a peach margarita. Yes, Strawberry maybe. margarita, on the other hand. That's, that's basic. Ask them uh, watching to try it out, too, and let yeah. us know. Send us Please do. Share it on, uh, social Please settle this for us, because <laughs> yeah. I, there's just strawberry margarita all day long. Weigh in on this, though. If... Try them both. Let us know what you think. I think, gonna, I think I'm right. It's going to be strawberry, but let us know which one you think is better. Let me see that. Just give me this. Okay, we'll trade. We'll trade. Hmm. Oh, God. All right, it's okay. good. Okay, I do like the strawberry, but I think my peach nectar margarita has a slight edge. All right. I can admit when I'm wrong. This is really, really good. Kevin I just still... admitted he was wrong, you guys. That's a big deal. It happens on occasion. But I don't know. I do like the strawberry guava. I don't think I would order it, but I don't want to drink a peach margarita. But it's really, really good. I'll give you that. Nicely done. Okay. Um, so now, what about when you want to replicate a scent? Like, say you have a perfume or cologne or just another candle. You really love the scent of, um, but you just don't know what they're using. That's a good point. Yeah. A lot of times they will post their note profile. Mm -hmm. So if you, you can use the fragrance finder tool, uh, you can, you know, if you know the notes in your existing fragrances, you can try to find a baseline for what's closest to what they're offering. But typically you're not going to get it exact in, in just one. Right. Um, so maybe you, you know, you figure out what it's missing and you go from there. Yeah. So we play around with this a lot. Um, and there is a particular Santal fragrance that a few of us All around right. here really, really like. And I don't yeah, think you I have it. smelled keep, it yet. Y'all keep going on about this fragrance. Yeah, I haven't but, tried um, it yet. So we've spent a lot of time trying to replicate it, and we think we've gotten fairly close. Um, well, so let's see, you have it over there. I do. We pre-did this one. This one, I was told, needs to be much heavier on the sandalwood. Yes than it is on the Black Sea. Yeah, so this is a blend of Black Sea and Sandalwood. Yes. It's about a 75-25 blend. Which is why we have so many blotters. Yes, so we have four blotters. Man, even at that low of a percentage, the Black Sea really comes out yeah. still. It's a really strong fragrance. I it mean, is. if you're looking for a big thrower, Black Sea, there you go. Fantastic by itself. It is nice with the Sandalwood, though. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Sean, uh, Sean loves Black Sea. That's his baby. He came up with the name for that after, what, about a year of deliberation? About a year, and we'll never hear the mm. end of it. He's very proud right. of it. You guys got to try this blend, I'm telling you. It is incredible. Now, is it that close to the, the it's, original, It's you think? pretty close, and I almost think I like it better. Oh yeah? Mm. Good. Now, another thing to keep in mind, when you're doing these really specific blends, if you're going under you know, 75, 25, you can do that on multiple blotters. When you start to get really technical with your blends and, and really complex, you may just want to go straight to doing it on a scale. Yeah. Uh, and we're not going to do that today. Uh, it could be messy. It takes a little bit longer. We don't want to take up the time. But sometimes if you need you know, a 9 to 1 ratio or something that's you know, a bit much to do on the blotters or just too specific yeah. to do using just the lines, do it on a scale. Uh, get a you know get a little bottle, a little beaker. A science it, bottle, is what I like. Oh, is that the technical them. term for these? It is the technical so, term. Okay, get your science bottles. <laughs> put them on your scale, tear it out, and go you know gram by gram, so you can get really specific with your blend. Yes. Uh, you also want to have a few of these anyways, because when you start to blend your fragrances for your product, uh, you don't want to put it into the same container. You might throw your ratio off, get it wrong, mm -hmm. and then have to double it. If you've done it before. It's, yeah. It can be it, it can end up wasting a lot of products. If you measure them separately then put them together into a single bottle. That helps a lot. Yes. So when you're getting into these really complex blends, you might want to pull out the scale mm -hmm. and, and do it that way instead of doing the blotter strips. All right. You want to try another kind of more complex fragrance blend? Absolutely. What do you have in mind? Well, I know Kevin really loves a particular fragrance. 
library. I do love the yeah. library. All right. How about we try this? Mm, what about Tonka and Oud? Fan. Okay. Fantastic choice. Love Tonka and Oud. Uh, or as I like to call it, Tonka Dude. Tonka Dude. So this is the end of our blend here. It'll be Library Dude. <laughs> library Dude. So, yes. It may not be a surprise to some of you. I love Library. This fragrance by itself is fantastic. I really, really like Tonka and Oud too. Mm -hmm. um, library is very woodsy, primarily woodsy. Um, and you, the Tonka and Oud adds a little bit of powder to it. Yes. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious to see how that's going to work out. I think this blend's going to be pretty nice. So let's see. We'll go uh, heavier on the Library, right? Yes. Let's After go without question that. heavier on the okay, Library. Yeah, well, <laughs> could have seen that one coming. And we'll just go up to the first line on Tonka and Oud. Tonka Dude. That is a good fragrance by itself, um, though. I don't even want the Tonka Nude in my library. I think this is that good. All right. So let them air out, out a little bit. You're the library aficionado. I know. It's a risky move. All right. As I thought, the, uh, the powderiness of the Tonka yeah. Nude, they, co they complement each other really well. Mm -hmm. they, they're a lot of overlap with those woodsy components, but that little bit of just powder that the Tonka Nude brings to the mix. Mm -hmm. All right, that one might be going to my line. Yeah? I like that. Oh. Oh, man. Yeah, that's nice. That's really good. I'm into it. Well, I'm into library, dude. I like it. <laughs> it's a good combo. And these two, you know, I, I expect them to work. Like I said, the notes overlap a lot. They're very similar fragrances. Yeah. Uh, but just that little, little subtle difference between them makes them mix really well. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's so many ideas that we keep coming in that... that you know, we don't have time to do them all, but in, on the same subject of, of replicating yeah. a fragrance, you, know, you don't always have to re replicate another candle. Maybe you're going to replicate one of your favorite foods or beverages. Right, just like with my peach margarita. <laughs> you love those peach margaritas, I do. huh? So one is that comes up this time of year is, is the pumpkin spice latte. PSL. Everybody PSL. talks about them, so we don't have something out of the bottle, but you could absolutely blend that. You Pretty take, easily. Yeah, like, like pumpkin pie and, and hazelnut coffee. And cinnamon stick. Dash of cinnamon stick. Yeah. Have yourself a pumpkin spice latte. So you can blend you know, whatever ideas you come up with. If you, you just find the right notes and the right fragrances that mix mm -hmm. together, you're going to be able to come up with something close, work it into your brand, and just add that to your line in a way that yeah. you know, works for you and what you're, you're trying to sell. Yeah. So why don't we try a, f a blend that has three separate fragrances? All right, and equal parts. Um, yeah, let's let's make it easy. All right, and go, this go is equal where parts. it can get complicated. Yeah. You may do two to two to one in terms of the ratio. Right. Uh, the, I have a few of mine in my line that are you know two parts of one fragrance, two parts of another, and just a little bit of one. Mm -hmm. So it's it it can get very complicated. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with the just one to one to one. One to one to one. Okay. One, and did you have a, a specific one in mind? Well, one of my favorite fragrances is Vetiver, which I feel is a little bit slept on, and it shouldn't yeah. be because it's a really incredible fragrance. It is good, and it, I think yeah. it's underrated. I yeah. agree with that. So let's try a Vetiver and. With what? Well, why don't you pick? Well, you know, one we haven't gotten to yet that I think is is an important to talk about, especially with blending, is Fireside. Ooh, yeah. Fireside is, is a really good blender. Uh, it, some people find it very harsh by itself. It is very, very smoky. It's a lot. Um, so it can be a lot. It has its place in specific lines. It's very masculine, but it's, uh, it has a lot, it's a lot of smoke. So some people want to tone that down. I think it's great for blending. Mm -hmm. uh, any woodsy fragrance, pines do really well. Just a little bit of Fireside to, yeah. to kind of add that little bit of smoke yeah. to it. Yeah, and speaking of uh, pine blends with uh, with Fireside, mm -hmm. we uh, just posted a new tutorial for making an enamel mug candle, um, and that has a really great blend of Fraser Fir and Fireside. It is. It's so good, I almost wish you didn't put it in the tutorial because yeah, yeah. I kind of wanted to keep that secret to myself. Yep, and we were burning it up in our office yesterday. It's and, really good. Oh, man, it smelled so good. So definitely check that one out. But we need a third one. So, so just, let's go back to the library. Kevin or? wants to go back to the library. Let's, let's just throw a library. Okay. It's going to work. It yeah, works yeah. with those two fragrances. Well, and actually, I think we already have this one blotted. Excellent. Out. Perfect. I'm going to try it first. Okay. Oh, man. That, that's, a, that's a good one. You guys got to try this one. And that fireside just really adds a nice touch of smokiness there at the end. It does, and it tones down the vetiver, too. Yeah. Uh, I think I'd go a little bit lighter on the fireside myself. You think? I, I, I do. Know. Uh, probably a little heavier on the library mm -hmm. too. Maybe, maybe bump well, that up a little bit. Go a little I bit less. I could have told you that. Less on the fireside, um, but it is it's, it's an excellent blend. And three fragrances you, you might not have thought to blend. So try these things out. Mm -hmm. Let us know what other wild blends you've come up with. Send a comment to us. Let us know. Mm -hmm. We'll try those out as well. 
This one is very, very good. I do think I'd go lighter on the fire lighter side, though. Fire I tend side. to go light on the fire side. Mm. It's very smooth. I wanted to touch a I smoke. I just love that, mine. you know, that smell when you've been at a bonfire and the smoke just kind of clings to your hair and your clothes, so. Um, I'm getting that from this. Yeah. I and like you know, another one on that note would be Christmas Hearth Ooh. as well. Another very smoky fragrance, a bit yes. more complex than these. So yeah. proceed with caution with that one. Mm -hmm. uh, but another one that you could, you know, heighten some of the components within that mm. fragrance. Well, I think it would work really well. Might try that too. It's good. Interesting suggestion with fireside. Ooh, interesting fireside suggestion. Um, mixed with vanilla chestnut. Ooh, with vanilla chestnut and Chest, fireside. Chestnuts, roast. Ooh, and let's try that fire. one because I, I really like vanilla chestnut too. Me too. I'm, I mean, I was disappointed we okay. weren't going to do that one today. Here we go. All right, fireside is already out. There we are. Pass me a blotter, please. There you are. Thank you. Bend in that tip again. All see, right. this is another one that I could see going lighter. They didn't indicate a ratio, did they, Heather? They did not. They did not. So see, we'll this just is, do one to one again. We'll do one maybe. to one. Again, one that I could see going lighter on the fire side. But you let's never find know. out. Vanilla chestnut is nice because it's sort of a bakery fragrance, but there's a little bit of woodiness in it. It does. It has a touch of, of like cedar. It has a, a pine yeah. note to it. It's, it has a little bit of woodsiness to it that I really like. It's really interesting, and it's one you really have to get into Ooh. a candle, I think, to test out. What I, do you think? I like it far more than I thought I oh, would. Oh, really? I see that back. I don't know if I would tone down the fire side. Really? Yeah. Let me see. Wow. I think it's because oh, the man. vanilla chestnut wow. is so strong. Great that... suggestion. Whoever made this uh, vanilla chestnut yeah, fire Yeah, side? shout Ooh. out to that person, Heather. That's awesome. really good. And I, wow. I thought the fire side would be overpowering, but it's, it's not. It's not. And I think it's just the, how strong. Vanilla chestnut's a very strong fragrance. Yes. Uh, so I think it's just it's coming through really nicely. Nice blend. I'm into it. Okay. Let's see. So we had some other suggestions to, uh, that we wanted to get to. Uh, someone on Instagram suggested we try oh, these, sea salt and orchid and this coconut. Is a Instagram suggestion, yes, huh? Yes, Instagram right. suggestion. So I need the coconut on my side. Here you go. Sea salt and orchid, one of my one favorite coconut. fragrances. We've actually had several questions about blending coconut. So if you have other thoughts on coconut. Other thoughts on coconut? I have, yes. Great. Coconut is a fantastic blender for the same reason that mm -hmm. some of the lighter florals are. And that they, it, coconut is, is pretty simple. And it can add a great extra element to so many different fragrances. I mean, you can start with even Jamaican Me Crazy. You want to you know, bump up that coconut note a little bit. Uh, blend it with, say, like blood orange. Blood orange and coconut go really well mm. together. Uh, coconut lime and coconut, if you want it to, you think it's got a little bit too much lime to it. Mix those together. Heighten the coconut. Coconut is a great, great blender. Uh, so I'm really glad this came up. This one works really well. So I'm going to dab this coconut here. And we're, we could even do a few if we would like. But yeah. let's start off with the sea salt and orchid. This one came in yesterday, I believe. Uh, and I was pretty excited. I just love to, sea salt and orchid. I was going to try this one, but I saved it for on air because I wanted to get that genuine reaction. Go ahead and air that out for me mm -hmm. while we wait and close this up. Waft, waft, waft. It's like wine. you got to waft it. Got to let it aerate a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I really like what that coconut's bringing. Sea Salt and Orchid is a very, very popular fragrance. Yeah. Uh, it's one of our most popular. Uh, I think it may be actually coming in at number one right yeah, now. It's it might very, very be popular by itself. And so some of those I'm always hesitant to blend. That's mm -hmm. because they're so, so strong, mm -hmm. such strong sellers on their own. Yeah. I like that. That's really nice. That's really good. So we did have one other question. Uh, someone wanted to uh, have a get know what to blend with white birch. Another one of my everything. favorite. Yeah, everything. everything. You can blend. A little bit of white birch will go with anything that's not gourmand. Anything that's not a bakery scent. Yeah. I, just, I love white birch. I well, believe someone suggested pumpkin souffle and white birch. Pumpkin souffle and white birch. Yes. Well, that's okay. a bakery Why scent. Why not? So let's, let's try it. Let's make me wrong again. Let's check it out. Okay. Sorry, I'm still pumpkin obsessed with this sea salt. By the way, this sea salt orchid with uh, coconut lime would probably work really well, too. Ooh. When you guys are doing this, I'm interested to see what, what type of notes are you getting Okay. Of the Absolutely. So pumpkin souffle is one of our most popular pumpkins. Um, obviously, it's heavy on the pumpkin. A lot of cinnamon and some nutmegs. It has different spices to it, uh, which is why I'd be hesitant sometimes to, to add a woodiness to it, mm -hmm. but let's give it a try. Yeah. You can get a blotter for pumpkin souffle. Don't spill fragrance everywhere. And the vanilla comes through a lot mm. on the pumpkin by itself. Yeah. Um, which, you know, we're just talking about the 
vanilla chestnut mm -hmm. having that sort of uh, vanilla mm -hmm. pine combo to it. So yeah, they're, they're all, onto something there's here. There's a good amount of eucalyptus and white birch as there well. There is. Yeah, yeah the, it's very heavy on, on the woodsy notes. So the I'm birch. curious to see how it's going to mix with pumpkin souffle. It's good by itself. Let's see what we have here. I'll let you do that one. I'm not big on the pumpkin scents myself, but Kevin loves I'm really pumpkin. glad somebody suggested this yeah. just for you. And again, I mean, maybe it was easy to please. I don't know, but this is really good. Hmm. I'd probably go lighter on the white birch. I don't know if I would do this one to one. Um, I, so maybe I think, a two to one in favor of pumpkin souffle? Yeah, add just a little bit of that eucalyptus yeah. birch, you know, that earthiness to mm -hmm. the pumpkin, you know, to the cinnamon, vanilla, okay. and pumpkin notes of the pumpkin souffle. I don't hate it. I don't know if I'd go heavier on the pumpkin souffle, but again, no. I'm not really a pumpkin person. You know what else would work with that probably would be toasted pumpkin spice. Oh, I, I do think that think the I toasted would like that. nature yeah. of the pumpkin, the, the toasted pumpkin spice would play really well with the white birch. Yeah, it would play, it'd really play nicely with the woodiness, I bet. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Okay, well, this isn't my favorite, but I think people would like this. Do you see it as an improvement over pumpkin by itself? Oh, yeah. I like it. I also really like blending white birch with white sage and lavender. I think those play oh, yeah. really You've nicely together. We've talked about together. this one before. Yeah, this is one of my favorite blends that I make at home all the time. Yeah, white birch. White birch blends with a lot of stuff. In fact, uh, I blend it with cranberry woods. Cranberry woods, it plays really well with. Yeah, to keep those uh, woody notes. Yeah, I want to. Yeah. So as we discussed before, to heighten the notes. Yeah, you know, I, I really like cranberry woods the way it is, but I wanted to heighten that woodsy birch note to mm -hmm. it, and uh, adding some extra white birch. Like a 75-25 blend goes really well. Yeah. Let's see, we had another question about um, something to mix with cedarwood and vanilla. Cedarwood and vanilla, it's another one that uh, is an interesting con uh, combo yeah. of, of the really woodsy cedar notes uh, with the sweeter vanilla. It's yeah. something that is it's difficult to mix sometimes, mm -hmm. but that we did really well with that one, so let's yeah. give it a try, cedarwood and vanilla. And what do you think? Maybe I mean, another yeah. woody uh, scent would probably be obvious. Yeah, I mean... Fraser and fir? No, I'm going to say library, but I think we've had enough of that one. Kevin with the library again. All right, fine. Fraser fir. Okay. Well, here, Fraser fir, too. Fraser fir, while it is a you know, dominant pine fragrance, it does have an element of sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of our sweeter ones, so I think that, that could go well with the cedar wood. I believe I have the Fraser over here. Oh, I have them both over here. Oh, you do? Okay. And we have a great article on all the differences between Those our pine fragrances um, on our website as well. So if you're interested in checking that out. Raise your fur. I do like cedarwood and vanilla a lot. This you is know, a, this is another good blender. It is. Yeah. It is because it's it's a fairly simple blend on its own. So it does mix very well. Fraser fir is one of my absolute favorite seasonal fragrances. Mm -hmm. Fraser fir by itself is a huge seller. It's very, very good. Like I mentioned it's it's very piney, very earthy, but it has an element of sweetness to it. I a little bit of citrus in there as well. Yep, it has a little bit of a citrus note to it. It sweetens it up. Uh, I think it makes it stand apart from some of the other really earthy woodsy mm -hmm. fragrances. Right, let me try that one. Hang on, I like it by itself though. There you go. We're getting a lot of great suggestions coming in. I what else do we, we have? We'll also be including these, uh, some of our favorites on Ooh, our blending article nice. page as well. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we'll yep. definitely add um, all your uh, great blend suggestions on, into the blending article to make sure everyone has a chance to look at those, try them out if you want to. Sniff along. Absolutely. We'll probably try all the suggestions when we run out of time here, and uh, we'll put our favorites on the list. So That's check nice back and, and check out that article and see if yours uh, makes the list. Yeah. Now, what about uh, some more seasonal Ooh. blends? Like, we talked about the, the PSL uh, blend. Absolutely. But, you know, it's almost Halloween, and Halloween is my favorite holiday. Um, Absolutely. So I actually already came up with a few blend ideas that you can find in our fragrance oil <clears throat> blending article. Um, so I uh, actually came up with the names first, and then I decided what I would blend are, together to match the name. You are very good at naming. Uh, and so one of my favorites is a blend I'm calling Bad Apple. Um, oh so, yeah, I remember you talking about yeah, this one. Yeah, we talked about this one. Absolutely. So uh, that is a blend of black currant absinthe and Macintosh apple. Yeah, I think you tried to do it with apple harvest initially. Yeah, I tried it with apple harvest first because I was thinking fall, Halloween, mm -hmm. you know, cinnamon, spice. Um, but the spice was a little weird with yeah, the blackcurrant the absinthe. cinnamon, the cinnamon note didn't really play yeah, with the black Yeah, they weren't playing absinthe. nicely together. So let's do the, the Macintosh apple, which you'll have over there. I have your blackcurrant absinthe here. Macintosh apple is such a great, just fresh apple fragrance. It's by far the most true apple that we have. We, we have quite a few hot apple pie, uh, apple mm -hmm. harvest that have 
you know, a lot of cinnamon to them. Uh, Auto Papai obviously has some vanilla cream as well. Uh, the Macintosh apple is what I consider to just be a true ripe apple fragrance. Mm. So if you want to add a punch of apple to anything, uh, and the blackcurrant absinthe does have an apple note to it already. It does, yeah, uh, and so that's why I thought they'd be good together. Makes perfect sense. Use the fragrance finder for that, actually. There you go. So let me give you one of these. Don't forget to bend. I know, I always forget to bend. Bend and dip. And this I just do a one to one. Okay. Thought you might favor the black currant absinthe in this case. Maybe. No. There you are. All right. Bad apple? I don't know, it's pretty good. Too good to be bad. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, well, the blackcurrant absinthe by itself is pretty complex. You know, you have the, the blackcurrant obviously uh, has that boozy absinthe note mm -hmm. to it, but it does have some apple as well. It's, it's a complex fragrance, a lot going on there. So this is one that I think is a little bit dangerous to mix with, but, but yeah. the apple makes sense and it works. Yeah. It does work. I'll give you that one. That's good. <gasps> Definitely better good than the apple harvest. Uh, but hey, you know, maybe somebody yeah, else would like, error. maybe they would like apple harvest better. They might. Try them both. Yeah. See what you think. Don't listen to me. Certainly don't listen to her. Try your own out. You know, see what you like. Do you know? Just just experiment. The beauty of the blotter strips is you can do these blends and have minimal waste at yes. the end of it. I mean, you're getting a, just a tiny, tiny bit of fragrance on these blotters, so you really have very little mm -hmm. to lose here. Um, you know, if you're not quite sure if it should be apple harvest or Macintosh apple, try them both. Yeah, and let us know what you think if you do try it, because maybe you think apple harvest is way better. I, I doubt it, but maybe we'll see. Let's pull that one. All right. Mm. So we also have, you know, we do a lot of blending here. Uh, the customer service department specifically does a lot of blending. Uh, we, we work for a, a, an unusual company in that it's not rare for someone to just walk up and say, hey, smell this. Yeah, they'll right? smell you know, like it. That's, it's, it'd be weird outside of this office, but it happens all the time here. Uh, and we, come together, we put together a lot of really good blends, a lot like mm -hmm. what we're, we're doing today. Um, you, know, and, you know, one of our, our customer service reps, Mary, uh, is constantly in there doing really good blends. In fact, I believe she, she helped with some of these seasonal ones that you put yes, in the article. Mm -hmm. um, but they also like to, throws a curveball sometimes and surprise us with something that is just horrible. Uh, they, they build it up, they tell us it's really good, and then it's just deliberately bad. Um, so we have this running joke now about whiskey and cake. Yes, and I have yet to smell this one you, because I've been avoiding it. We, I was going to subject you to it yesterday, but I thought it was uh. better to just do it on air because this is a remarkable experience that you oh just you have to... You really have to. I'm just... doing this just for you guys. I would not smell this otherwise. Uh, whiskey and cake. Ugh, you here we the, go. You have to get the whiskey for me. Do I have to? By the way, if you have any other really bad blends, we're yeah. running out of time here, but if you have any really bad blends you want us to try, um, we'll try to get another one. Let us one. know because. Oh, Heather has a bad blend. Bad oh, good. Like your face alone is. Oh, I wish you guys me. could see her face right now. I promised that I would make you try this on air. Ugh. Coffee with lemon verbena. Coffee with lemon verbena? Why? Why? Why would you Why do this, do you do this? She's... Your granddaughter tried it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, man. All right. Here's your cage. Did you get your whiskey? I oh, need, I didn't give I you a blotter. My... Kevin. Uh, quit stalling. Come on. All right. I'm just going to do a very small amount. No, no, no. Of it's got to be. It's, it's half and half. Whiskey is a great blender. It is very strong on its own, which, you know, you might be into that. I don't know. I'm not here to judge. But it is very strong. Woo. <laughs> Whiskey and cake. I guess if you want to make someone a gag candle or if you just. That's true. It would make. It would... Just go ahead. Want to, want to, you know, to get some revenge on somebody? I don't know. <laughs> it's everything you hoped it would be, isn't it's it? It's everything I hoped it would not be. Oh, man. And you make a really good point. Uh, gag candles are, are, are becoming yeah, increasingly popular, true. so this would be a great one to do. Start off with just a couple inches of cake by itself, uh, and just let it burn down into the whiskey <laughs> and see what they think. Ooh. Send those to your enemies. Yeah, thanks, Mary, or whoever came up with that one. <laughs> that one was Mary. You have her to thank for that. Oh, man. Right. So what... It, we have any other bad blends? We, we oh, the lemon the, verbena. The coffee, okay, yeah, we'll do that one. Not excited about. I think I have fresh coffee over here. Lemon verbena and fresh coffee. You know, lemon verbena, on, on, a, on a different note, 
Um, we were talking about blending white currant at one point um, in preparation for this, and I think that the white currant blends beautifully with lemon verbena. White mm. currant has a has a slight citrus note to it, a little bit of lemon to the white currant. Uh, so if you want one that's not going to make you gag, uh, <laughs> lemon verbena and, and white currant it goes really well together. This one I don't have quite as high of expectations for. <laughs> Here, you, why don't why don't you give this one a shot? You subjected me to whiskey and cake. You would do that to me. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing these blends, you guys. Like even the grosser ones. Um, um you know, yeah. it's not as bad. I don't know. I can smell I that from it, here. It's it's a bit much. Um, but after the whiskey <laughs> and cake, I don't know that you can get much worse than that. So I don't know. I can, I can smell that from here. I don't know if I need to. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> oh oh man, that that's a lot. That, mm. <laughs> Makes the nose tingle. Ooh, okay. Oh, God. man. I've got one last blend. One last oh, blend one for last us. One last blend. Okay. Oh, I don't know if my nose can handle much more. This was just a suggestion. I thought it was. It smells pretty good, uh, or it would smell pretty good, especially for summer or spring. Uh, oh, okay. Summer? Mandarin mimosa. Ooh. Sparkling grapefruit and Ooh. cool basil citrus. Oh. Charlene said she mixed that yesterday. Cool citrus. And it smells amazing. So we had cool citrus basil, mimosa, and mandarin will be on your side. What was the yep. last one? Uh, sparkling, sparkling, sparkling grapefruit. Sparkling grapefruit. Let's see. I think Formerly I known as sparkling palmello. Yes. Exact same fragrance, but we did change the name. Just because a palmello, people weren't really sure what that was. I still don't even yeah, know. Yeah, I'm not really sure either, is. to be honest. So we changed it to sparkling grapefruit, but it is the exact same fragrance, just as good oh, as it yeah. was before. Uh, and I'm pretty excited about this one. I love citrus blends. Like you said, I'm a yes. Florida boy at heart. I yeah. love citrus blends. Uh, and I think this is a good idea. Yeah. Let's get, get this, this one. lemon verbena coffee away from me. <laughs> don't worry, I'll let you keep, I'll take oh. the whiskey and cake. I guess, it's a I guess it's a fair punishment. We made you guys uh, wait a while. Again, we are so sorry for that delay and those technical difficulties we were experiencing. But yeah. I Please hope we made up us. for it, you know, with giving us these blends to smell. But at least we're ending on one that sounds like it'll be really pretty. I, I, you know, cool citrus basil does not come up often. I think it's it an should. it's it should. I think it's an underrated fragrance in that you, you know you don't often get that herbal citrus combo. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like it a lot by itself, and I could see this really working. Did you go to the first line? On I that went one? to the first line. Yeah. All right, and I forgot to bend yet again. So these two. Yeah. This is the sparkling grapefruit and just the cool citrus basil. Mm -hmm. Which. Ooh. What do you think of those on their own? Those two by themselves are really good. Yeah. But that was not the idea. So let's go with yeah. all three of them here. Me screw these on for you before you'd spill fragrance all over our table. That wouldn't be good. You like that? That's very, very good. Mm -hmm. um, I, like I said, love the citrus in general. Uh, that one makes it, it's very oh, tropical. Man. It is really tropical. Yes, that one would do really well in coastal towns, probably clean up mm. in Florida. That's a very, very good all around citrus blend. Um, it does feel like there's some vanilla or something in there, kind of grounding it, holding it all together. And it so gives it's it a, a little sweetness to it in the too, base there. Mm. And there's something that's kind of like effervescent and sparkling. I guess that's the, the sparkling grapefruit. Or the, yeah, or the mimosa. It's in the name, yeah. Yum. Yeah, well, it does. I like a slight that boozy a element to it because the mimosa and mandarin. Yeah. I like that. That's yeah, a very good blend. Yeah, thanks for that suggestion. That was a good idea. And these have been some great blends uh, you guys have been suggesting. They are. After With a the while, exception though, <laughs> After of lemon verbena and hazelnut coffee. <laughs> but better, but it was better good, still than whiskey and cake. A bad suggestion. So after a while, though, you do need to take a break. Um, yes. You know, you, you smell a lot of these back to back to back, and you, you tend to get, you know, you, you tend to get overload on your nose. You might start to go nose blind and start to just get burnt out a little yeah. bit. So. And a lot of people think you smell coffee beans uh, to reset your that nose. That is common. But actually, do not do that. Right? Yep. Yeah. I prefer to I prefer to just smell myself. Yeah. So a lot of times when we're doing a fragrance evaluation in between as smelling different fragrances, we'll say, again, we say some weird stuff around here. Smell yourself and we'll all go. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz it kind of resets your nose, it, clears out some of those aromas. It's something that you're familiar with on a daily basis. Yeah. So you're you're just you've become nose blind essentially to your own smell. So mm -hmm. smelling yourself is just a great way to reset. Um, uh, apparently we, have, we do have one more suggestion. I can handle one more. Okay. So we've had a lot of requests for more fall scent blends. Sure. Fall scent blends. Someone suggested pumpkin souffle, very vanilla, and holly berry. Ooh, Interesting. Pumpkin souffle, sort of very vanilla, and holly berry. Kind of bridging the gap between autumn okay. and winter there. That I could like be that. interesting. All right. Let's try it. You want to do a one to one to one? Just one to one to one. Keep it simple. Yeah. Um, let's see if we can find all these. Pumpkin souffle, which we already pulled oh, out I somewhere. Oh, I put some out of order here. 
You will have the holly berry over there. Okay. Holly berry. Oh, Sounds harvest. Like a holiday blast. Holiday blast. Is that what we're gonna name this blend? Sean's great at coming up with names. Namer of Black Sea. Have... Very mysterious fragrance. I'm afraid we do not have very vanilla back here. Who took our very vanilla? We are missing very vanilla. Amateur hour, guys. All right, well, let's mix it up and do cedarwood vanilla. Okay, okay, cedarwood vanilla. It's gonna not quite the same, Holly but it's gonna berry. add. It's still gonna add a, a heavy vanilla note. Uh, and just a little bit of extra woodsiness. So mm -hmm. I apologize for that. I thought we had everything on hand here, but it looks like we are missing our very vanilla. Where's so. the pumpkin souffle? There we go. Grab me some blotters. Did we keep the cedarwood vanillas out, I believe, because we used it already. Yes. Oh, man. It helps to stay organized as well. Here we go. We got it. Didn't know we'd be getting so many suggestions. Cedarwood vanilla. Holly berry and pumpkin souffle. Again, one to one to one. Don't forget to bend. Did you ah, remember? I remember that you time. Got it. So I have our cedarwood vanilla here. You have our holly berry and our pumpkin. This is pumpkin. Oh, yeah, you can tell. Pumpkin is another one of those that does have a, a yeah. distinct color to it. It's kind of orange, like pumpkin. Indeed. It can shift the color of your wax just slightly in the finished product. No, nothing major, but you will often see it, especially at higher fragrance loads. What do you think? I haven't had a chance to get them. I'm going to mare out a little oh, bit. Oh, OK, OK. That is really, really nice. It is. It's mm. kind of f autumn, kind of Christmas, a little bit of both. I could see where very vanilla would be better, though. I think the cedar is the a little bit The cedar adds something a little weird. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think, it, well, it's still really good. I think it plays well with the, mm -hmm. the woodsy notes and the holly berry. But I don't know if it's quite what our, what our viewer was going for. Yeah. With the cedar, it's a little bit different. Still really good, though. Fantastic idea. And I like anything that you can sell between the seasons. Oh, yeah, really that's always nice. Have to come up with a clever name for that one. Holiday Blast. Holiday Sean already Wish. came up with it. He is our expert namer. Yeah. Mm. I'm into it. That's good. It. No, I really, I really like it. it. Yeah. And I love that idea of, of having one that you know can can just bridge between the two seasons. Yeah. Yeah. And Thanks so much for sharing all these blends. Again, this is awesome. This is really good. But I've got to give my nose a break. I mean, this yes. is this is getting to be a bit much. I can still smell everything that's on the table here. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and call it at this point. Uh, we've been going on for a while. Again, sorry for the delay. You know, we know no, that we you guys are waiting around that. for us. We're, we really apologize yeah. for that. Just ran into some technical difficulties. Uh, we'll make sure to not let it happen again. Yes. Um, yeah, and definitely remember, check out the Fragrance Finder. Absolutely. Um, check out our uh, article on all things fragrance oil blending. And check out our tutorial that uh, helps you practice a little bit of scent blending, our DIY enamel mug candles. Absolutely. And if you continue to have ideas for blends, still send them over, even if you're watching yeah. this you know, after the fact, if it's not live anymore. You can still comment on it. We'll still get to mm -hmm. it. And uh, a lot of times we'll, you know, we'll try them out, and we may even add them to a tutorial yeah. or use them ourselves. We always love to hear from you. Yes. So absolutely reach out. Even if you're not watching this live, shoot us an email, leave a comment, direct yeah, message. Yeah, DM us, anything However you want to do. do it. Let us know. We'd love to hear from you all. And thanks for stopping by. We really appreciate you coming, and uh, happy blending. Yeah, happy blending. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks for watching, everybody. We hope you enjoyed it. And we hope you got some great ideas for blends you want to test out at home. If you like the video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to our channel as well. And if you have ideas for other videos you'd like to see from us, let us know. We look forward to hearing from you. And thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Bye.